Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back dudes to another episode of Hermitcraft. I hope everybody are doing fan-freaking-tastic today. Let me take this shield off. <laughs> Last time we uh, did the end busting with the mumbo, the dumbo jumbo. It was a lot of fun, dudes. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. The screams from mumbo. Classic, am I right? A classical already. I had a lot of fun doing that. And um, we're going to take a look at the spoils today. I still haven't seen his skin without the mustache and with his scallium tie. I'm super excited to see it. I think he will be probably releasing an episode today. Um, so that's, that's going to be a fun thing. But let's start by taking a look at the spoils of war. So after the episode, me and Mambo split the Shulker shells. We got uh, two stacks of Shulker. So one stack of Shulker boxes out of that, plus an extra one, which is great. I got his Elytra that he found. Uh, and personally, I found two because I won it. So that's why I got all the spoils for the Elytras. And then personally, we found some of these things, which I mean, a mending pickaxe ain't bad. This ain't bad at all. This is actually, this goes straight into our white box, I think. Uh, where's my... Wait. Hold on. Okay. I have my under chest on me. Like a boss, man. Yeah, this goes straight into here. Uh, it's a digging shovel, so that's very good. What else did we get here? Wow. Is... <laughs> Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't necessarily like fortune on pickaxes because it's just... It's gonna give us too much gravel. Let's throw these away. Boop. It's gonna give us too much, um, flint if digging gravel. Uh, this could be good, but we need mending on it. I kind of would like to... I have an issues with Elytra. I got one backup Elytra that has mending on it. And then I have three more that are all sort of without the mending. If we could today, it would be nice to get mending on all the Elytras. I just need a mending villager. And to be honest, this is something that I've been putting off for a long time. The village trading center. We got to get this up to a... Oh, efficiency four. We got to get this to a point where I can... Get my own mending villagers. Um, but I may have to head over to Hubfan today and do some trading. So just out of curiosity, this doesn't look like it's working. Because I've been at my base and I haven't sorted through villagers in a very long time. So I should be having a lot of villagers here. And I don't. <laughs> uh, or wait, maybe... Oh, I can't even remember. I think I have to feed the villagers carrots and stuff, don't I? With this new setup that I have. I don't think they passively... You guys will, will will probably let me know this. But I don't think these guys passively will generate any villagers. I think I have to actively do that. However, the villagers down in the village trading hall... Oh my goodness, there's my ceiling there. The villagers down in the village trading hall... They do generate hearts between each other. Which is another issue with this farm. It's almost as if I need to rip the whole thing out or change where my village trading center is. I really like the idea of having the village trading center inside the skull though. So I'm not really sure what to do about this. And to be honest, this place is kind of... It needs a repair anyway. <laughs> Let's just say it needs a repair anyway. Um, what I would like to do is to create a, an automatic carrot farm. Fully automatic. And then shoot all the arrows indefinitely into the... Or with a lever. We could control it with a lever. Shoot it indefinitely into uh, into the uh, uh, this block space right here. Like give them give them the food right there. Because I did build this so that you can actually... The, the, the food will stay there. Can I get my emeralds? Thank you. Um, but then we would need a carrot farm somewhere. Which is not too hard to make. It requires us to have some villagers that are working if we want it to be automatic we do have the candy land down here the candy land is going to be the the other farms right <laughs> thank you by the way for the feedback about the gumbo bertoni <laughs> so ugly so ugly um so the question is do we move the village breeder and put that somewhere else together with a carrot farm maybe and where if so because as long as it's within range we can just have the villagers being transported over here using water canals. That's not a problem, actually. Um, this could be way further away. That would fix the issue of the villagers in the breeder or in the center wanting to breed. But where would we move such a village? Where would we put it? 
because it needs sky access it needs uh these blocks here above the door no actually we could have blocks above we could have blocks like here i think you guys have to correct me down in the comments because i don't actually remember i think they can have blocks there but they need to have a sky axis in front of them, right? So this block, uh, that's inside the house. This block, ugh, come on. You see why we need to repair this? <laughs> the block that I'm ender pearling on, this block needs to be a sky block. Um, and we kind of want it to be above the floor of the village trading hall. And not too far away. <laughs> So that would like leave us the options of putting it in the volcano, which could absolutely work because we could just use the stain. I think you can use stained glass. We should actually try that. Let's do an experiment. Can I use stained glass is the question. And the way we can test this is pretty simple. If, uh, if I stand here with an open sky and look at the light thing, it says light 15, 15 sky. If I put this down, it's still 15 sky. If I put another block down, it should said 14, yeah. So I think, uh, I think we could get away with having glass. Now, second part of this test. Can we have multiple glass layers with air in between them? <laughs> you know, you see what I'm doing? Could we do something like this? Is that going to give us 15 still? It is going to give us 15. So, okay, we could hide it using the fog effect, which makes the volcano a pretty good spot for a village breeder. Technically, not necessarily lore-wise. Because the volcano is essentially, or was essentially going to be the diorite burner. But to be completely honest, like, I've I've not found... I know I've got a lot of screenshots of ideas of how to design this inside. But I haven't really been happy with any of them. <laughs> and we could totally make the fog effect in the ceiling there. Yeah, you guys will let me know down in the comments. <clears throat> that could be a project for next time. But today, I do want to get back to the Candyland. I do want to do some... Uh, some of the uh, or, or at least the cocoa bean farm because the the first thing i really want to do is finish the cookie land <laughs> i want to finish this before i do the candy land but i have to do the candy land to get the farms so you know how it goes and around and around it goes so we're gonna do some work over here today or no not necessarily we're gonna we're gonna get the cocoa beans uh in production and i think i want to do two farms i think i want to do the one click farm where you can just stand and produce a crap ton of cocoa beans. If you haven't seen those before, it could be a good opportunity. It's super easy to build. And then we probably should do a passive farm as well for the future use. But before we get into that, let's just finish up what we did last episode with all the uh, with all the things here. And head over to Cubfan and try to get the uh, elytras all have mending on them. That's kind of, that's going to be the, the core thing for me. Get my six elytras to have mending and I'm breaking. Uh, I'm gonna bring some sugar canes myself. Uh, I do think I have some more down at my farm. I know Cubfan has said to me that I can use his materials and stuff, but I want to use my first material, my, my own material first, <laughs> and then utilize his materials. Cubfan's base is absolutely amazing. Wow, it's funny to me because Cubfan always builds like uh, very random things. Like <laughs> he just puts random things up. Uh, with no real theme to it, in my mind, it's no real theme to it, but it always, I, I've been a big fan, I'm a big fanboy of Cup fan in general, but I've been a big fan of his single player in the past, and uh, I've always, like, admired the stuff he does, um, because, like, it doesn't seem to me that he have a theme, has a theme or a, or, or any rules to follow, but it always turns out so nicely with Cup fans' bases, so... Well done. Well done, a cover fan. Maybe th this is the way this is the way to play without getting like bored at projects because you're not limiting yourself to a simple or to a single build style. You can just kind of let your creativity flow. I love these tulips he has as well, by the way. They are very nice. So well done, cub fan. Anyway, here's the village trading center. Sounds funny when you walk in. There's like a, a guy there. And I believe he doesn't have the best mending village here in the world, if I remember last time I was here. Uh, we do need some unbreaking books, though. 25 emeralds for an unbreaking book. And we do need... Let's see if we can find this mending guy. Do I look for books, or how does this work? Depth Strider. Thorns. Yeah, mending, 22 emeralds. Okay, so it's not, it's not that great. But it will do, it will do. 
so I guess I just gotta start multiplying my uh, my emeralds first. Paper, 24 paper. Oh wow, okay, this this guy is good. And a silk touch book as well. This guy is brilliant, man. Alright, after about an hour of trading and listening to... Uh, hmm. Uh, I got uh, quite a few emeralds here. I wasted a lot of time trading only the paper and resetting and buying glass and uh, bookshelves and stuff. But uh, here we go. Uh, very nice. I think, hopefully, that's going to be enough. I'm going to need six, uh, six many books, though. So, they're 22 each. Do the math. I'm not sure. Uh, plus, I'm going to need a few emeralds to reset his trades, I'm sure. Let's just see how it goes here. Oh, yeah. No, no problems. No problems. We didn't even have to reset it. Got six many books. I may just as well, whilst I'm here, do some more shopping, I guess. Well, if he resets, he does. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I do need some unbreaking books, though, as well. Let's just buy the ones we need for the life. Just six books. Okay. Very good. We should have enough levels and we do have a little bit of emeralds over. So I'm going to go uh, to his ender chest. Let's store the... Let's get that out. And uh, I have that one there. But this has really made me realize how much I miss having proper village set up. Because I, it, it really does stop me a lot of the times. It really does stop me not having, uh, not having correct, uh, a correct setup for it. But there we go. Six wings. All called angel. All with unbreaking and mending on them. Uh, very good. Put that back in our box. I should really color it to something else, but um, <laughs> it says angel on the shulker. I didn't, I didn't never, I never realized that. But yeah, it did make me realize how much I miss uh, just having access to like a proper. Ooh, this is a good one. Having proper access to a uh, mending or a village hall. Um, and for those of you who've seen my my single player series, like you can get cheaper than twenty two. I think I had like a book that costed five, five for mending, which was insane. Absolutely insane. Put that in there as well. All right. I think we're all good. We're all set um, to go uh, to go back to the island now and see if we can put up some of those farms or at least get the cocoa bean farm set up today. All right. I think I've got everything uh, sorted for uh, for to build this, uh, this uh, <coughs> cocoa bean farm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a... I don't know if this works anymore, so we're going to have to try it out. But I'm going to use an old design that Etho... I believe Etho came up with back like five years ago that I've used in the past. Uh, and it's a mini click farm. But you can use it not only for carrots and potatoes. You can also use it for cocoa beans. Uh, or you could at least in the back in the days. They may have changed some stuff. But we're going to try it out here. Uh, I forgot to bring, I forgot to bring, uh, bring redstone blocks to place, place my redstone on. <laughs> okay, one sec. All right, I got some blocks. So for this specific build, we're going to need some redstone, maybe some repeaters, maybe comparators. I don't think so. We're going to need a sticky piston for sure. Uh, we're going to need dispensers, which I have made up here. Uh, three of them, I think, will do. Uh, that will do. We're gonna need some hoppers and uh, yeah, I think I think we're good. It's a should be a pretty simple thing to build. I haven't done it in ages though. But I think I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space downwards here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm doing this inside the gingerbread chocolate house or whatever, whatever you wanna wanna call it. We're gonna do the following. We're gonna need a jungle log here as well, and I guess we'll place that down first. If we have that there, this is where we'll be standing to activate the farm. It will require us to right click is the thing. We don't actually have to have it there, but uh, we'll put it there for now. And then we're going to come down, probably make a little bit of a hole here. And let, let's see. I haven't built one of these in so long. We're going to we're going to start by having three dispensers facing this block here because the cocoa bean will will be sitting on the side here. And as you guys know, as you dudes know, if you bone meal cocoa bean, they will grow. And the reason we're using three dispensers is because three bone mills will make it fully grown. Uh, oops, I think. I, I don't know if that's like a thing that always happens or always occurs. Maybe it's a bit random. Maybe sometimes it takes four bone mills. I'm not sure, but we're going to do it like that. So basically, all we need now is like a clock that keeps uh, running when I'm standing uh, using the farm. 
and we're going to use a, a pressure plate i think that's what ito used as well in his original design we're going to use that to activate the farm and then i'm going to need to build a clock underneath here so basically this block here will pick up my signal right yes um <clears throat> now i want to make it so that i can use this for carrots and all the other stuff as well and um just because that's that's like the original idea so i'm gonna have a sticky piston there and we're gonna have a block there that may actually hurt the clock here so i may want to may want to drag the power take the power somewhere else than underneath there um yeah that may that may hurt the whole clock because we need this piston to go up and down on a clock and we need the dispensers to be shooting out uh bone meal on the same clock uh, i also want to fit uh hoppers here so i should do that now so i don't forget about that i want to fit hoppers there so that we can easily store bone meal in the farm using some chests all right so i've got a clock set up a simple comparator clock and i've hooked that up to all of these dispensers i'm used to find issues with that not all dispensers are actually powered by the clock so the way we test this is those two are powered and that one is powered as well right if you put bone meal in you will see this black sort of particles they're not actually using any any bone meal here jeez this is so loud man i'll probably lower that in the video for you dudes holy crap okay <clears throat> but now we also got a power on that same clock uh we got to power that piston but way slower than than what we just did there so we may actually want to use a different uh, a different clock for that i think the the speed of the dispensers are definitely good so just to demonstrate this if i were to put a uh cocoa bean here that will instantly grow up now if we have that dirt block there it's going to break it eventually but yeah like i said i may have to rewire this so that i can power that piston properly uh, i don't know if i do that that will still power the piston right yes okay um i need to hook that up on a on a, a slower clock as well all right so here's what I did, and I don't know if this works yet. We're gonna check it out. Instead of using the comparator clock, uh, I put a torch over here, and that's fine because I think we can actually let's do <laughs> let's check that out immediately. Pretty sure we can put a carpet on top of that, which is totally allowed in the plastic uh, the plastic thing. Do I have? Do I not have any carpets? There we go. Yeah, <clears throat> I think we can put a, a a carpet on top of that, right? Yes. Okay. Very nice. That was. Uh, Kind of something I didn't really test, but uh, anyway, can I put a block there? I think I can, and let's just do a torch there for now, and another carpet so we can walk in. Um, this redstone torch activates or deactivates this redstone, which activates this classic uh, redstone clock that we have here. We can actually compact this a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Can we do that? I don't think we can actually. Hold on. Yep. No, no, we need to. We need to. We need to do it like that okay <clears throat> uh which shoots the signal around this is the clock you're looking at there i put this on two for now we'll see if that is uh, good or bad i then use the same clock to on another three tick delay uh power the piston so that goes up and down and then on the inverted signal i use another repeater here and that is hooked up to all the dispensers so my theory is that the dispensers will shoot at the bow mill and then the block will go up and destroy the crops or the cocoa beans we're gonna try this out i should be just be able to stand like this and it's <laughs> it's not working that's okay the piston is pushing it too quick at the moment so i gotta delay that signal somehow i think i did it i think i did it let's see if this works now that i'm recording no what the crap is there a difference when i'm recording and not recording <laughs> there's four million both of these okay I did do it though, I swear. Does it have to do with when I start the cycle? Oh, it worked there. Okay. Okay, so it's not 100%. It's not 100%, but it does work. Every time it misses, it doesn't actually use any bone meal. So that's not the end of the world, but it's not super efficient here though. If I do this so we can see how we're, how we're doing. And I'm just holding right click. That's kind of the the plan of this uh of this farm or the idea of this farm yeah it's way too inconsistent way too inconsistent it does work at times the only change i made was that i removed the the repeater down there and i just powered it directly into the thing if i were to slow down this clock how would i do that put a repeater over here on another two tick delay 
then that may actually fix it then. That's very slow. <laughs> okay. That does seem to do more for us. Hold on, let's do this again. The idea is that you can go AFK here, just as in a, in a fish farm. Hmm. Now it doesn't work at all anymore. Okay, now I think the efficiency of this thing is actually very good. Uh, I say that and then I start talking and it doesn't work. What the crap? There we go. Don't know if there's... Oh, okay. The server lag there. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, if my ping goes up and down even the slightest, this is going to change the pace or the efficiency of the cocoa bean that grows up. That's, that's a big problem for us. Um... And now it doesn't seem to work at all. Maybe Mumbo just logging on earlier fixed it. Okay, now it's working. Actually, 100%. You saw the lag there? It's interesting, right? <clears throat> Works 100%. So maybe I have to just get the timing correctly when I <laughs> when I start it. But yeah. Um, that's exactly what I wanted. So that's perfect right there. All we gotta do to get Cocoa Bean is just stand on this pressure plate. And then when we don't stand on it, it should shut off. Very good. So what I did was no delay there. I added a three tick delay to the redstone clock. So it's pretty slow. And that's because of the server. If you do this on a single player, I tried it out in creative. You don't need any delay there and it's much faster. Um, it has to do with how much ping you have to the server and stuff. And then I added a two tick delay to the dispensers. Uh, it's a very simple farm to build yourself. Now all we gotta do to make this work with all the other crops is get a bucket of water. And I remember throwing away buckets earlier, but I think I have more in the utility box. Uh, we need to get a bucket of water. We need to make sure that the, that the place is uh, tilled, soiled, whatever. And I also need I also need to get a hoe. And I'm not talking about, you know what. <laughs> and then once we're done with this, I think we'll go and meet up with Mambo or invite him to the island here. Uh, and we'll see... We'll, we'll, we'll look at his face without the mustache. <laughs> it's gonna be good, dudes. It's gonna be good. Hold on. Like that. Just gotta put this in a, in a corner. We should have space for this. We may have to add lighting here as well because it may be too dark where the crop grows. But if we add that there, this farmland is gonna get um, wet, right? And it's gonna stay wet. Or maybe we need to add it on a lower level, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, we need to go down one. It needs to be on that level down there. That's fine. Just put it there. We can cover that. And that should uh, wetten the farmland. The piston pushing it up and down should not affect it. Very nice. We got the loading stations done. I need another chest there. But that's uh, that's easy to add. Let's try this out with a, with a random crop of some sort. This is a way to get golden carrots very easily. So if I do carrots, I just need to stand like this. Oh, and I need to... Make sure that I'm not eating them, though. <laughs> Maybe I should be doing this. Okay, again, I think I need to get the right... The right... Uh, the, come on. The right plantation here. There we go. I did this in Hermitcraft Season 4, but then I used the other trick where you let the crop uh, pop up due to light level updates. Uh, the reason it may... It, 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 the reason for the non-growth here may be lighting though. So let's just put a light source there. And maybe uh, we'll just temporarily put a light source up here. Like that. And now let's see if we get a better result. Oh, the farmland actually untilled itself. Wow, so there, there are some things I gotta work out with this. I think if I want to do the, the normal crops, I it's better to use the light level that I did in Hermitcraft Season 4. Because that's very reliable. It doesn't rely on server tick speed or anything. Um, or well, it does, but not as much as the piston. <clears throat> so I should probably do that if I want the proper care. It does work, though, as you can see. It does work. Oh, hold on. I may be the same guest. Did he die? There we go. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Okay. 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 So All you right. down the Mobile Lisa path. Hold on. No, 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 no. You literally were just on the same path as me. Oh and then you my goodness. <laughs> I see you now. I see you. Okay. Okay. And you have All shaven. Right. This is good then. This is good. Yeah. 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 I, I hope it's, it's updated for you. 
All right, here goes. I've got my helmet off for you. <laughs> oh my God. It's not. It's not a good look. Okay. I never like... noticed how small my chin is until today. <laughs> what is going on there? You look like a Literally. sponge, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Seriously, my mouth is like falling off my face. Yeah, it it's is. like I have like a... I've got like an undermounted mouth. It's basically on the underside of my face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, oh, so dear. that's... The tie is beautiful, though. The tie is really good. I, I actually... <sighs> It looks like I've forgotten a little bit. Oh, there's a gas right under us. <laughs> oh, it looks, it looks like I've forgotten a little bit, um, because there's still some red up there. Oh yeah, I just thought that was your neck blood. You know, everybody has a little <laughs> yeah. bit of neck blood. <laughs> I cut myself shaving. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Not very good at it. Oh, that oh, is man. beautiful, dude. That is so brilliant. Holy, wow. It does look good, doesn't it? So I think I think what what I said at least earlier on is I think I think I'm going to keep this. This is going to stay kicking around for for I think ten episodes. I think that was close. I was standing on that black that that block pretty much. Trying to get the air away. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know I kind of look like a ghast. Oh. Oh. That was. You that do was, look a little good. bit like a ghast. <laughs> and 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 you know in the last video we did then busting you kind of sounded like a ghast as well. That, you know? That's true. That's true. I yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't my most manly episode. I think <laughs> it, was, it, it was funny. <laughs> I am just so happy right now that I did not have to shave this beautiful beard off. I saw a tweet. Someone tweeted to me a skin without the beard and the and the hair, and it was not a great look. It was not a great look at all. I'm just happy that it was uh, that it was Bumble that had to had to go through the the shaving. <laughs> Anyway, dudes, I also did finish up the uh, the design of this. I designed it, made sure that it's looking uh, neat. I do like I do like the look of it. I think maybe uh, maybe we want to fit another light in here. I did have a light source, so I do have a torch up here that will make sure that this uh, works. Uh, I jumped on it though, so I need to re refill it. Hip, there we go. Unfortunately, there are dispensers visible. There is some redstone visible. You could build it so that that redstone is not visible, but it would be a little bit chunkier, a little bit bigger redstone. Decided to go with shulker box here, shulker boxes here instead of the uh, chests. Make it look a little bit neater. You can't really uh, do much about the hoppers here if you want to have this type of input feed. But there we go. Very happy with that. And that's like exactly what I wanted this place to be. Small farms that I can come and use. Um, or that automatically generates things for me. Very, very happy about that. The size of this thing is actually not that big. <laughs> As you can see on the back here, I think these are just my scaffolding blocks. But I'm probably going to keep the building uh, be this size. Just because, I don't know, I think uh, I think it looks neat from the outside, I guess. The inside does not match the facade, but that's okay. Uh, but I'm very happy with this. So, <clears throat> I think we're going to call the episode there for today. Check that out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming along slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. But anyway, dudes, that's going to do it. Like I said, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you dudes have enjoyed the episode as always. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe if you are new. Let me know what you think down below about Mambo's new mustache. I personally think he looks like a sponge. <laughs> but that may just be me and my weirdness. That is me. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a fan freaking fantastic evening. And I will see you dudes in the next episode.